Hello everyone and welcome to my new studio. I know it's been a little while since I've been able to record anything. Thank you for your endless patience with me between last year and the start of this year. I can't believe it's already June. I think there are many of us in this boat. Uh, but today we are going to be taking a look at my new studio. I am finally settled here back on the West Coast up in Oregon. So not everything is completely in order, but we're getting there and the studio is ready to show you. We are off to a great start because my other camera, my better camera, doesn't want to film over here. It's too dark. So I'm using my phone and I hope that the, that the audio is salvageable. Uh, I think I mentioned at the top of this video that this is a studio slash office slash workspace because it kind of has to be an all-purpose room. When I was in Texas, I finally was able to upgrade to having a two-bedroom apartment. So one room was my bedroom and one room was the studio and then I had a regular living space. Here, I have downsized to a one bedroom apartment. And as you could see in the opening footage, this is the bedroom. Uh, I am using the rest of the studio like a studio apartment. And this space is for everything else. So this first little corner doesn't have much to do with watercolor other than the snake painting that I made. So over here, we have my little sewing area. Um, when I was at my old apartment, uh, I had plenty of space, but this lived in a storage tub at the back of my closet, so I never really got a chance to use it. Here I wanted to make sure I put it out because if I'm not going to use it, I'm not going to keep it. So um, I have it all set up here, although it hasn't been used yet. Um, this is an old table from my grandmother um, from when she passed away. Uh, I said that I would be interested in taking it. Uh, this top part lifts up and that's where I store all of my needles, threads, patterns, chalk, pins, anything else like that. And then it has two drawers. They're a little bit sticky. Uh, they don't have great traction. So it might make a little noise when I open them. Here are some of the fabrics that I have up top. Again, I haven't purchased anything for sewing materials in at least four or five years. Uh, so it's been a while. I love this fabric so much. I'm hoping I can make something out of it. And then the other one are vintage sheets that I figured I could do something with. I made some napkins out of them before. Down here, I have some more fabric, a really pretty uh, kind of rust orange fabric that I want to do something with. And then actually I need to uh, take back my words. I have purchased some new sewing materials. Uh, these are some fat quarters that I just got off of Etsy for a small sewing project. Uh, I'll show you later in the room why I bought those. Um, and then this basket here is just, I didn't have any more room in the drawers. These are either pieces that I need to mend, this dress has a tear in it, um, or, or fabrics that I need to like pattern to make other things out of. So big goals we'll use in the future, probably not anytime soon. Next door to my sewing area, we have a variety of baskets full of things. These top two are clothing. Uh, so in addition to all of my craft and uh, office things, uh, this room does hold all of my clothes. So I have some things in the closet behind me that we'll look at in a little bit. Not the clothes, but I'll show you the other half of the closet. These are hats. These are scarves um, so that they are easy to grab when the weather calls for it. Um, this little basket down here has my yarn that you can't really see that, can you? This is my yarn uh, from when I crocheted many, many years ago and haven't picked it up since. Here's the start of a hat that I never finished. It would be really cute if I remembered what pattern I had been using. So we'll see if uh, I can salvage that yarn for another project. Getting nice and low here, we have some of my soap making supplies. I uh, had wanted to do some soap making for a really long time. And finally last year is when I started doing that. So in here, you'll see uh, I have some fragrances and then I have pigments. So this is probably more interesting to you being a watercolor channel. I don't have a ton in here. A lot of them are, are natural based um, things that you wouldn't use for paint, but uh, can naturally, um, spruce up some handmade soaps. The center basket here is for uh, jars and containers. You can see there's some overflow. I started making salves last year as well, um, and that's been a lot of fun. So just some extra supplies. Capping off the end of this little table area, we have the rest of my soap making supplies. So there are molds, uh, cutters, safety goggles. Uh, in the bottom there are mixing bowls and an immersion blender and all the other things that I need for soap making. 
So if you turn around behind where I was sitting to show you all of those sewing supplies and baskets, you have the closet. Half of it over here are my clothes, and then the other half are the start of my actual art supplies. So here's where most of my watercolor things are, and we'll zoom on in to take a closer look. I still think that this area is too dark for my other camera, so I'm going to continue on with the phone footage. I hope you don't mind. Uh, this unit here stores all of my watercolor tubes, well, everything that can fit in here. They're organized by brand, so here you've got Schminke, we've got uh, two that have Daniel Smith, we've got three that have Da Vinci down here at the bottom, and then there's other colors here as well. They're nice and deep, so there's uh, lots of room here. I forget right now, uh, as I'm recording this, where I pick this up, but I will put it on the screen and in the description below. On top of that unit is where I have some of my overflow tubes. So this pouch has all of my pour watercolors, most of which I got from Jenny Branberry. Thank you, Jenny. And the other one has my Schminke Hordam gouache. Most of my palettes will take a look down here, but there's a couple smaller ones that I have up here, including my portable painter, my blue pines, and the very first set that I had that was like the Windsor and Newton Cotman set, but most of them are Turner paints at this time. And then also tucked in over here are my bean paint set. This large case has all of my Mission uh, hybrid watercolor gouache tubes um, so that I can refill from that. And over here is mostly for my miniature painting. So uh, we'll look at some of my miniatures uh, elsewhere in the room, but I started playing D&D &D a couple years ago. Haven't painted anything in a very, very long time, but I've got my paints here, washes, brushes, uh, and this is a light that has a magnifying glass on it so that I can actually see what I'm doing. This container here is for all of my leftover watercolor sediment from my water. A lot of you ask what I do with my watercolor water, um, if I just pour it down the drain or what, what do I do with it. So I let it sit in the cup that I'm painting with uh, until most of it settles to the bottom. I pour off whatever I can from the top and then I use a brush that I don't care much about to scrape up the sediment from that container and I pour it into here. And then the little bit of water that's in here evaporates off. And once I fill this up, which will take a very, very long time, I can take it to a paint recycling center. All right, we are down on the floor now looking at this four cube unit. The unit I think came from Target and then this organizer shelf in here, I looked everywhere online for a very long time, finally found a small business that makes these um, and they make them for different units from like Target or Ikea or any other um, big furniture shops that sell this type of unit um, so that the measurements are correct and they have all these mini shelves so that I can um, not have giant stacks of pallets that are like eight pallets high that I'll tip over but that I can store a lot of the pallets in a small amount of space and then I've taken little teeny tiny skinny tape to label all of them so that I know which one is which so you've got like my first palettes that I made here granulating palettes um, Isaro, Imgram gouache, Sennelier, Da Vinci, Mission White gouache. Guys how long has it been since I tried to record a video? They've been on and off for like two hours, so like I thought they were done, but they are very much not. All right, I think we at least have a moment of quiet here. So I don't remember where I was. Over here I've got all of my metal tins. They're a little bit more precarious because a lot of them have the thumb rings on the back, but they still fit in here as well. Yeah, that's where I keep all my watercolor palettes. Over here are the sketchbooks that I'm actively, well, actively is a, a strong word. Uh, these are my not finished sketchbooks uh, that I have started in. So um, some of them are super old and I don't like the paper. Um, other ones I get scared off by the paper because it's so nice. This one is um, a handmade one that I made during quarantine at some point. I think it was pretty early on and I'm only using handmade paints in there, so the mood has to strike me. Um, and then there's some other ones in here too. So uh, all work in progress is, this is a paper sketchbook that I started I think back in like 2017 and it's not finished yet, but that's okay. We've got the color spotlight sheets that I put in those videos. I save them all in here. We've got color charts, more color charts. These are all the um, like brand asset things that I have. So color charts, from Daniel Smith, we've got Schminke, just like all the all the information for the um, brand. 
color chart things. You know what I'm saying. This big old binder is for my swatch cards. So they're not all in here right now because a lot of them are in another basket that you'll see later. But the yellows, oranges, and reds have been entered to into a database that I am working on online. So they are back in here. And the others will get to come back and join them when they are finished. These two drawers, I suspect I might have a little harder time showing you what's inside them. Let me, let me adjust. In here, we've got uh, the So Flat acrylics down there. We've got some regular acrylics. We've got white gouache. We have, um, these are like painting accessory type things. We have uh, some dry gum Arabic from my very short stint trying to make watercolors, but my shoulder problems are such that that isn't really a viable option for me. Um, I've also got my book binding glue for the sketchbook I should have showed you a few moments ago. There's some gesso down here. There is a stay wet palette for my miniature painting. And then there's a bunch of stuff for miniatures. So like fake grass and rocks and terrain and things like that. This bag has my extra palettes in it so that if I want to make a new palette, I have some supplies on hand to do that. These are also miniature supplies with some sanding paper and some uh, base materials and some uh, wooden tools and whatnot. And this last pouch um, has the empty half pans that would have gone in the bag with the pallets because they would be used at the same time. However, it didn't fit, so it got its own bag. This bin is much more chaotic. So I used to have all the supplies from here and I think two different um, baskets at my old place, but I downsized from a six cube storage unit for these supplies to a four cube. Um, and so I had to get rid of some stuff and then um, consolidate some other things. So this I purchased a long time ago uh, to make a dice tray and just never did it. Uh, you'll see I have plenty of other dice trays. I don't really need it, but that's what this supply was for. Um, this was, uh, I'll show you elsewhere in the studio that I have some pigments for watercolors, not for the soap making, and they all came in this box. And so I figured it was too nice of a palette to throw away. I'm really trying not to keep things I don't need, but this is like a, a genuine good thing I can, I can do art on. So I'm keeping that as well. Moving through the chaos, I've got some transfer paper. I've got uh, some double-sided sticky tape. We've got uh, pipettes. We have felt. We have macrame hangers and macrame cord that I thought I wanted to do earlier in the pandemic and then didn't. Um, I didn't get rid of them though because I still have intent to do that. I have my pan pastels. I have some tools for the pan pastels but they're kind of hard and gross so I might need to replace those. Um, there's like a magnifying glass. There's a brayer. We've got uh, sealing wax down here. It's just it's all the craft things that I it's not watercolor. I don't use them on a regular basis, but usually for D&D &D things um, or if I have a specialty project that I want to work on, this is where I'll find things for that. I'm trying not to hold the camera too much uh, during this one because I have shaky hands and two because I have a much increased um, probability of hitting the mic and making a terrible noise. So I'll do this quickly. Um, over here, we have a basket of all my extra cords and cables. Uh, that don't have a purpose right now but might in the future. I threw away a bunch of them when I came here and now they're all in this small thing. Um, this is a book binding press that I used again for that uh, sketchbook that I made. Here's my extra camera gear. This box is full of old sketchbooks that are completed, uh, old art from when I was a kid. We've got some picture frames that I uh, wasn't able to hang. All of that is in here and see I already I dipped the camera. That's why I'm not allowed to hold it. All right, we are back on the tripod because I cannot be trusted to hold a camera. We have over here is some of my bigger watercolor supplies. So we've got my giant pad of arches that uh, I don't even know if it's still good anymore. Um, I really should look into that. I'm not great about uh, paper and if you know, tell me in the comments, how long is watercolor paper good for? And uh, I probably just need to cut it up at this point, use them for swatch cards. I have a, um, I don't know what this is called. It's for making envelopes or cards. It comes with a bone folder, so they have grooves on it so you can fold things accurately. I've got a self-healing mat, more paper, mostly more paper, and then a large, uh, larger, it's not a huge, but it's bigger than my other one, uh, paper cutter. 
Over here we have my more normal sized watercolor paper, or normal for me anyway, I work pretty small. We've got the 9x12s. There's a pad of rough that I don't know if I'm ever going to use, but I figured I should have it on hand in case a project calls for it. We've got hot press. We have board that I tape all of my paintings to for the most part um, <laughs> when I'm working. I'm usually pretty lazy. I don't stretch my paper properly. If I do want to stretch my paper properly, that's what this is for. We've got some Hanamule, some scrap paper down here, some samples that I need to work on and go through, some pastel paper and some rhyme paper, and that's about it. All right, we are finally at the art desk and I've switched back to my hopefully better camera for both video and sound. I am trying to keep my table fairly clear. We'll see how long that lasts. So all that I really have here are in those little cubby drawers. There are some watercolor scraps, um, either loose sheets of paper or actual scraps that uh, aren't really big enough to do a painting on, but would be good to test colors. Over here is where I keep my porcelain palette pretty much all the time, unless I need the desk for more filming space. It doesn't really fit other places easily and it's pretty heavy. So I haven't cleaned it at all for a very long time. I'm thinking about sprucing it up and checking my colors and seeing if there are any additions or subtractions that I want to make. So let me know if you're interested in seeing a video where I kind of edit my palette, clean it on up, and then show you what I keep on that because it's been a couple years, I think, since we've gone over my uh, studio palette. Hanging out on the desk are a cup of brushes that I use most often. These are my silver black velvet brushes plus a couple of flats that I have that I'd like to use. You'll see I have other brushes on my bookshelf as well, but these are the ones that I want at a glance uh, to grab most of the time. Next to my brushes, uh, not sponsored, but what I've been using for my water glasses for a long time are Talente Gelato Cups. I find that they're the right size and shape to use for water cups. They are stout, but hold a lot of water. Um, they're not easy to tip over, um, but they're also not super heavy and won't uh, risk breaking if I drop them. On the other side of my table is my streaming setup. So I have a laptop, a webcam, and a microphone. Behind my desk on that side, I have a brush that I admit I only have for nostalgic purposes. My grandfather had a drafting table, so I find that I really enjoy uh, having that there to remind me of him. Finishing up the desk area, on the other side of the table underneath, we have a basket of in quotes, clean <laughs> uh, rags to wipe our brushes on. They are stained because of the staining pigments, but they are all washed and clean and ready to go. And then the white basket next to it is for the rags to go into when they are done being used so that I can wash them and use them again. I have paper towels for when uh, reusable rags don't make sense. Like if I'm cleaning up a large amount of paint that I don't want to wash into my washer machine. Um, if I need to lift paint off of a painting, I need a clean towel to do that. Um, and the company that I get these from is actually pretty cool. Uh, I found out about them because of their sustainable toilet paper, but they're called Who Gives a Crap? And behind the reusable rags and underneath the paper towels is an extra tripod, uh, aside from the one that I'm currently using, and a weighted bag so that I can counteract the weight when I am using it, this tripod's feature where it has an arm that reaches out horizontally and I have to balance the weight so that my camera doesn't tip over. And you've already seen from the long shots that I have two of these pancake lights uh, that are flat. I'm trying these out. I used to have really big studio umbrella lights, but they take up so much space that I'm hoping I can get by with two of these flat lights that take up a lot less space. Hello, it is editing Denise here. I wanted to add in a little slide to let you know that this area has already changed a little bit since filming, just to make things a little bit more streamlined and easy to use. Uh, for one, I got more plants, which means I needed more space to put plants. Two, I couldn't get to my window to open it up and let Breeze in because my desk was centered and it was too cumbersome to try and get around. So I scooted the desk over to the right, put some shelves over on the left, and it's off center, but I think the play and saw work with it. Anyway, I just wanted to show you what the updated version looks like since you'll probably see pictures over on Instagram and I wanted to let you know why it was different over there versus in the video.
Still editing Denise here to show you some pictures of my geeky corner. I did film over an hour of footage for this area, but it was all completely unusable. If you think the footage I've shown you already is bad, it gets worse. This is my little geeky art corner. It holds a lot of appreciation for Critical Role, D&D, Firefly, and some other little fandoms I'm a part of as well. If you want to find any of the artists on my wall or on the pin board, I've tried to link as many as possible in the description below. When I was still playing D&D in person before the pandemic, I got really into collecting the little miniatures for my characters because of course I did. I even got to paint a few of them before things kind of shut down. So the image here that you're seeing is of my druid. She was my first campaign D&D character. She was a wood elf. I've talked about her a little bit before on the channel with a collaboration with Arla Bean. If you haven't seen that, I will link it in the card above. And some of her animal forms, including that really cool octopus that I'm pretty dang proud of. Here are a couple more of my characters. The one on the right hand side is named Zira. She is a draconic bloodline sorcerer. That's what all the black little dots on her are. They're dragon scales because uh, she is pretty cool. The other one that is kind of in the front on the left side is a cleric named Voss. I actually only got to play her a handful of times in Adventures League, but that mini was actually printed in color by Hero Forge, so I did not paint that one, but I did design it and uh, color her and it was a lot of fun. I thought I would also show off my favorite monster mini that I've painted, and that is this Mimic chest. Uh, I just had so much fun with the gradient from purple to blue, and that fleshy tongue was, was a hoot. The next shelf down has all of my Firefly and Critical Role memorabilia. I'm not a big Funko Pop person, but I had to have them for these two casts. I also have some little clay animals that I sculpted back before I did watercolors, some other little keepsakes, and uh, some more little collectible miniatures and books. The bottom shelf here is more of my functional D&D supplies, so I have uh, source books, campaign guides. I run two Curse of Strahd campaigns right now. I've got uh, some dice trays as well as uh, a lot of dice. So all of those little bags over on the right hand side hold dice sets. I like to color coordinate them between my different characters. And the dragon scale bags, I have probably like 10 of them in different colors. And they are by an Etsy shop called Hook in 20. I'll list in the description below if you want to pick up some for your own games. Oh, and one more thing. I think I mentioned at the start of the video that I had those little fat quarters that I purchased off of Etsy with my sewing supplies. That was to sew that little bat friend that you see there. If you've played Curse of Strahd before, you know it's a gothic horror campaign, and there's a little toy shop that has little quirky little uh, little things in it, so I made a little bat plush that is sewn very roughly. Below the cabinet are my notebooks, as well as a basket full of little knick-knacky things, like um, risers to, for if you need elevation on a battle map. This doesn't mean anything if you don't play d and I apologize. <laughs> and condition tokens, and I forgot to take a picture of it, but to the right of this, kind of in the cubby hole between the curio cabinet and the bookshelf, there are all of my DM binders, so where I keep all of my notes for running campaigns, as well as a gorgeous wooden DM screen that two of my friends gifted me. With all that being said, let's go ahead and continue on with the tour. Oh boy, y'all. I have been recording for literally hours. I thought it was maybe like 4 or 5 p.m. And I checked the clock and it is 7.30. So <laughs> hopefully we can get through the rest of this pretty quickly and that I can edit down uh, this video so that you're not sitting through hours of content. Um, all right, let's take a, let's take a tour of the bookshelf. All right, on this mostly top shelf, uh, from left to right, we've got a little cat planter that my mom got for me. It doesn't have any drainage holes and I don't have a small enough plant to put in it. So right now it's holding my palette knives. I have some more of that old antique thing, uh, old antique stuff that I mentioned earlier about my grandmother who worked at a uh, heritage museum and I just really like old stuff. The yellow box is a box of actual black thread, like it's full of black thread. Um, then there's like a banker ledger, 
Um, the little stones at the bottom are gum arabic crystals that I got when I toured the Da Vinci factory. I uh, thank you Marcello for those. I've got some little cute uh, owl figurines. There is also a vintage watercolor tin, a vintage um, kind of blue glass, white blue glass uh, jar, another stack of books, a little agate tower, and then here is where the rest of my watercolor brushes are. I mentioned that I had more brushes than what were on my desk, and this is where the rest of them live. Um, the tealish colored container has all of my dip pens, including uh, feather dip pens as well. The next shelf has my Posca pens in that gray and orange bag on the left, and then some of my Africa artwork. Um, this used to be hanging on my wall in my last apartment, but I ran out of wall space, so I filled the middle shelf with them. And then over on the far side there, that is a little thrifted uh, container, a little jar basket with all of my microns, sharpies, and gel pens, and then a little goose that uh, was also at the thrift shop. I am worried that you're not going to be able to see these. I hope you can. Uh, this picture over on the left is a little keepsake of mine. Um, after I left the zoo back in 2015 and I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do, I started doing craft fairs to sell my little clay animals and then I had just started watercolor painting and I was at one fair where I had to set up like a table um, to do like an interactive craft as part of my booth and so I did that and I had like these little stencils that kids could trace and paint and adults too if they wanted to but a lot of them were really reluctant um, and there was a little boy there who spent a really really long time um, at the booth painting and he did three or four or five little paintings and my mom overheard him tell his mom that it was like the most fun ever and so um, it was really special in itself and then before he left he came up and gave me this cat that he had painted so uh, I doubt he's out there but thank you Liam I appreciate the painting I still have it and that was kind of the moment that I knew that I wanted to go into teaching watercolors uh, transitioning from teaching at the zoo. So there are three baskets over here. We'll go through them all one at a time, starting with this one on the left. I don't have a great way to show you this. Um, again, I'm limited on my my video set up here and the lighting that we have. Um, but this bag has pencils and colored pencils in it. This bag has mechanical pencils, erasers, and sharpeners in it. This bag has charcoal and inks. And this bag has pens that I use, or like markers that I used to use for bullet journaling. Uh, and don't use them a ton anymore, but still have them nearby. This middle bin is home to my travel supplies. So this is my little travel kit, uh, travel water container, I'm uh, sorry, travel watercolor set, uh, one of my towels, a water brush, mechanical pencils. Uh, there is a fountain pen in here. Um, sharpener, just anything that I would need on the go. Um, I also have an extra watercolor set here that I've been working with lately and a couple extra travel bags if I need them. And finally over here I have all of my tape. I have my masking fluid. I have synthetic ox gall in case I ever use that but honestly I don't really. Uh, I have some extra swatch cards, some tiny scissors, a date stamp, and some inks and, is, uh, and a corner rounder. That's this guy here, hold on. I love using my corner rounder for many things, uh, be it watercolor related or D&D uh, &D prop related. It's really nice to be able to round off the corners of uh, palette charts that you put inside of a palette so that the edges don't get bent. I promised that I tried to record all of this before I lost the light, but you know, things happen. So this basket on the bottom shelf here is all of the things that I need to make videos about. Uh, so you might see some things in here that you recognize. You might see some things I've talked about making videos about before and haven't done. Some might be entirely new to you. Um, so if you see anything that you are interested in uh, seeing a video for sooner rather than later, feel free to let me know. Um, I think one of the ones that I've been wanting to do for the longest is a vintage watercolor palette video. Um, I have a bunch of vintage tins here that I bought years ago and never got to make a video about. The other basket is less exciting. This is just various camera equipment or filming gear or battery packs and 
boring stuff. I mentioned earlier that I had some loose pigments um, from a very short stint in trying to mold my own watercolors. Um, they were in that wooden box earlier, so I put them in here so that I could use that box for other things. There's a glass molar here, and then I have a glass slab elsewhere, but again, my shoulders are just too bad to be able to do anything with those. Um, I'd like to again someday, but otherwise maybe I'll find someone to gift these to. Underneath the bookshelf, I have a coccyx pillow that I should be sitting on right now since I'm on the floor, but uh, I'm not. And then there is a slab watercolor palette and underneath that is the glass slab for mulling paints. And finally, in this last little corner are my empty sketchbooks underneath the tablet. Um, there are five sketchbooks there that I have uh, in the standby queue, either for myself or to paint in and then sell in my Etsy shop. <laughs> the last area in the studio is my little office space. So you can really see I made the most that I could out of this bedroom. Um, it's serving as a lot of different functional areas instead of just a place to sleep. So uh, let's take a look at the office area and then we'll wrap up with all of the art that I have from other artists. Right at the entryway of this little office area, I have a paper shredder and my uh, air purifier because I'm allergic to cats and have a cat. Uh, that is said cat's bed for her to sleep on. We've got trash and recycling over here. Um, I have a temporary chair that should not be an office chair, but I don't have an office chair, so I'm using a dining chair with some pretty expensive padding on it. I've had a lot of issues with my back and my tailbone, so I'm trying to figure that out, but for now, that's the solution. The other part of the solution is having a sit-stand desk. So I've had this for a while. I need to get better about using it more frequently. Um, I tend to either stand or sit for longer periods of time and then that doesn't really help because the whole goal is to keep moving. So I recently invested in one of these mats that helps you move around as you're standing. Um, and hopefully that will go well. And then you can kind of see over in the right upper hand corner, um, it can lift and, and uh, unlift, go down. You guys, it's been a long day. Speaking of ergonomics, I have two different mice um, for my computer. The one on the left is more of a standard mouse. Let me move around the camera so this is easier for me. This mouse is more typical, uh, but sometimes hurts my wrist. So I switched to this one, which keeps my wrist at a different angle, my hand more neutral, um, but I don't love using it to be honest. Otherwise on the desk, I just have a regular old keyboard. We've got one of my mics for recording um, and then two monitors. Uh, I also have a monitor light bar from Ben Q. I think I mentioned that a video a while back. Um, they sent me it to, to let you guys know about this is years ago at this point. I'm not still getting free things for them, but it honestly is one of the best things that has ever been added to my studio or my office. Um, it is so, so, so helpful for reducing eye strain. So if you don't have a monitor bar and spend a lot of time on the computer, uh, monitor light bar is what I meant to say, <laughs> then I do recommend looking at one of them. Uh, it doesn't have to be necessarily this brand, but a big, big fan. The final little area we have to talk about is my shipping station slash, you know, other office things. Um, so we have up starting in the upper left, this is a basket that is holding the rest of my swatch cards. Um, so the ones that are not in that big teal binder uh, are in here until I can get them scanned in to my computer. Then we have a scale for weighing packages. This is a pile of originals that's currently available in my Etsy shop if you'd like to pick one up. This is a caddy for all of my pens and scissors and whiteout and all that kind of stuff. We've got some post-its. Uh, and I also have a shipping label printer. Uh, this is a Dymo printer, four by six. Makes my life so, so, so much easier. I know it's an added expense, but if you do a lot of shipping from your home and don't have a label printer, I highly recommend it. It saves me so much time and also materials because I don't have to buy packing tape and paper to then uh, fiddle with putting labels on the, it just, it's so much easier. I love it so much. The labels that I get are eco-friendly and recyclable. I believe they are from Eco and Clothes, but if that is incorrect, I'll put the correct company name on the screen, but I'm pretty sure that's it. Um, so more eco-friendly option than the plastic-based ones. Um, and then also there's a little thing down here I just want to mention in case someone else struggles with this. 
These are little earplugs that I got off of Amazon. I have to sleep with different earplugs every night because I'm a terribly light sleeper, but I also have a lot of noise sensitivity. So if you're someone who has noise sensitivity from either misophonia or ADHD or Asperger's or autism or anything that might cause uh, overload stimulus with noises, for me, it's Cricket grooming herself. As she's getting older, she smacks her lips a ton and um, it makes me so anxious to the point that I get angry. Um, so these have been a lifesaver for me while I'm trying to work um, since she does have a bed right next to where I work. Um, if I find myself getting upset or need a break from her noises, I have those on hand to use and they are reusable. In the upper left-hand corner, we have my larger mailers for 8x10 prints, and next to them are the ones for 5x7. These are both from Eco Enclosed. They do not have adhesive. They have little locking tabs that I then put a sticker over um, so that it uses less adhesive that can be removed. So the packaging is fully A, reusable, and B, recyclable. In order for prints to not get damaged in the mail, um, especially during the rainy season now that I live in Oregon, they really need to be uh, packaged in plastic. I have gotten rid of my backing boards, which were extra cardboard that might not have gotten recycled by its recipient. So they now just ship in their rigid mailers in bags from Clear Bags. Eco Enclosed doesn't have a plastic uh, option, but Clear Bags has a more eco-friendly option. It's still not great. They say they're compostable, but they're really only compostable in large facilities that uh, accept plant-based plastics. Um, but I'm doing the most that I can for my shipping supplies and trying to reduce waste where I can. In those next compartments, I have thank you cards. Those are the purple ones there. They're my tiger painting. I've got some gift bags if I need them. Then we have stickers, the uh, the ones that I sell in the shop, as well as the ones that I close the envelopes with. I also have some envelopes if I need those and some washi tape that I have from a million years ago that I haven't gone through and probably won't ever be rebuying again. In the center cube, the one closer to the camera are my zipper bags and behind them are the mailers that I have for them. I also changed my zipper bag mailers to a more eco-friendly option from Eco Enclosed. They have bags that you can use once and then they still have a second layer of adhesive so that the recipient can use them again before they have to be thrown away or recycled and they can be recycled where you recycle plastic bags. However, I'm down to such a low stock of zipper bags that I wasn't sure that it warranted a whole nother order of those and um, I don't want to reorder more of them until I make that decision. Uh, the ones that I have in the back there were left over from before I made that transition, so I already had them on hand, didn't want to waste them. All of my prints are uh, organized in manila folders uh, with the name of the animal on the front of it so that I can easily find them, and they are alphabetized. And at the back of all of them, I have hard cardboard um, that I used to use for backing my mailing containers um, so that they don't bend since they don't fill the entire box. You can see they only take up the very first part here. The envelopes behind that are the ones that I need to restock. Um, so those I need to be reordering soon. And then I have more thank you cards here in the back. For those of you who also sell stickers and might want to see how this is organized, um, these used to, they were boxes that came with my business cards back when I did business cards. I don't have them anymore. I uh, don't really have a need for them since I don't see anyone and do shows. Uh, but anyway, I have the name of the sticker written and then in that compartment are all of those stickers. So this is again more backing boards from when I used to ship my prints with them. So I cut those down to the right size, and then now I just have all of my stickers in here, easy to go, easy to go, easy to access, ready to go, um, and in a way that they don't get bent or mixed up. I usually have two boxes full of these. Right now I'm down to one because I was uh, destocking. I was liquidating my, my inventory before the move and I haven't restocked yet. Just a couple more things left. That last bin down there is for all of my extra computer stuff. I have extra mice in there, speakers, wrist pads, mouse pads, just all kinds of stuff that doesn't really have a place, um, but that might be needed in the future. And then if we tilt this way, 
tucked in between the shipping desk area, my computer desk, and the sewing table is my little printer slash scanner stand. So on top is my scanner. Um, so I use this to scan prints and those swatch cards I told you about. This particular model I don't believe is available anymore, but I'll list it in the description if you want to see it. But again, I don't think it's available. Way down here, hopefully you can see it, is my black and white toner printer. I used to have an inkjet cartridge printer with colors, but I didn't use it enough and the cartridges would always get clogged and then I felt like I was being really wasteful. I have all of my printing done by um, another company uh, that has worked well for me in the past. Back when I did photography, they're my print studio and then I moved to the printed press division for my watercolor textured prints. So I don't use this for anything business related. It's mostly like if I need medical paperwork or like business stuff, um, boring stuff in the back end. I don't print out any invoices for my Etsy orders unless they are requested, like for gift orders and things like that. But typically I do not send um, any receipts just to save on paper. All right, I'm sorry you're at a weird angle. I've tried to film this a bunch of times. I have no more light. It's almost 8.30 at night. I don't know how it's taken so long to record this video, but I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, not only the supplies around my studio after downsizing quite a bit, uh, but also some of my geeky hobbies and my, my fun art appreciation. Uh, I do have a lot more art that I want to show you from other artists all over my walls, but I will have to record that tomorrow when the light comes back. So... My Etsy shop has reopened now that I am settled here in Oregon and have a new P.O. box, so you can feel free to check out the Etsy shop if you want to pick anything up, and um, I'll, I'll see you again in the next video. Hello, future Denise here uh, with some still images for you because you all saw my videography skills. They are garbage. So uh, here is the wall that is next to my computer. It has two pieces of twine with these little wooden clothespins and I rotate out the art here. All of them are prints from either friends or artists I admire, um, and I just love having them up as inspiration. You can find all of the artists that are currently up here listed in the description below. This wall is behind my computer and to the right of my bookshelf. A lot of these are my own paintings with a couple from other people, so we'll take a closer look at those that come from other artists. The Elven Druid on the left-hand side is from artist Jen Sneary and was a gift for the holidays from one of my D&D friends. The art on the right is a scratch board original um, that I purchased at an auction for mountain gorilla conservation many, many years ago when I worked at the zoo, and I thought it paired really nicely next to this other black and white artwork. Moving on to watercolor and gouache originals, the rabbit is from Arlisha Yetzer, the armadillo is from Maddie Wilson, the misty pines with the eagle is from Trupti Cargini, and the monk seal is from Mary Sanch. Immediately as you come in the door to the studio on your right hand side and before you get to the print banners, I have some more pieces here. Some of them are my own prints, some are my original pieces, and then there are two that are from other artists. The sketch is from Sarah Tepes and the flowers are from my friend Tiffany. I realized that the panorama of the room did not include these originals, and that is a shame. I'm so sorry, Marley. These big cat originals are from Marley McGuire Bodouin. Marley, I realize I've never said your last name out loud. I've only read it. I'm sorry. That's probably wrong. Um, you can check out her work on Instagram. I am a huge, huge fan of her animal portraits. The last little piece that I have from a fellow working artist is by Haley Robinson of Cricut, and it's hanging on the art banner as well. Although those are all of the pieces by other working artists or friends of mine who are into watercolor, I do have two more originals in this room, and those are by my grandmothers. The medicine horse on top was gifted to me by my paternal grandmother, who instilled my love of horses within me, and the Painting on the bottom is a still life that was painted by my maternal grandmother before she passed away. 
Thank you to everyone who is still watching at the end here. I know that video footage was pretty rough. Clearly, I am better at watercolor painting and filming at a desk than filming around a room, but thank you for seeing it through. I'll be back on Thursday, uh, June 30th, to round out Pride Month with a new Pride painting to share with you all. And to start celebrating World Watercolor Month because it is that time of year again. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for liking the video, subscribing if you want to see more content, and commenting down below. And a special thanks to my patrons, of course, for helping me through this move and getting me set up so that I can continue to create content moving forward. I'll see you in the next one, and until then, happy painting!